Hello everyone, and welcome. Yes, my name is Aaron Fire, and welcome back to another episode of All Talk, No Shock. So today, as the title suggests, I want to talk about recycling your collections. And if you are a chug collector, a generations collector, you may be used to this already. It is the toy line that is mass produced and re-released the most frequently. But we are seeing this in the Masterpiece line. We're also seeing it in the Legends line as well. So that's what I want to go through today. Um, no shock. So probably the first big example I want to show of this is the upcoming drag strip in the Legacy line. Now Legacy is going to kickstart presumably a new trilogy of Transformers toys, merchandise and just a series in general going forward. But we've had the drag strip figure before in Combiner Wars. Now granted that is looking very dated now and Menasaur was famously one of the least popular combiners in Combiner Wars. So naturally this was the one to be repraised and brought into the forefront of some of the great engineering we know in the Chuck line today. It is very welcome but it got me thinking, what of your collection do you recycle? Do you recycle your whole collection every so often? If you look on sales groups or places like eBay or just sales sites in general, people are selling off their Titans Return their Combiner Wars, even some of their more earlier Siege figures very cheaply, which not that long ago were the mainline figures that were the centerpiece of many people's collections. And now we're happy to recycle them for a lot cheaper and going into the legacy line going forward, just replacing like for like figures. Another example of this is of course Optimus Prime. Now there is many versions of Prime released in any trilogy, but we have gone from many versions of Prime in the Combiner Wars series, then coming into Siege and Earthrise and Kingdom, there's been many incarnations of it, albeit just some repaints here and there, but the Earthrise Prime is touted as a very, very good Prime. And now we have Laser Optimus Prime coming in Legacy. Now, whilst that is a slightly different character, it makes you think, are people gonna sell their Earthrise Prime, their Kingdom Prime, to have Laser Prime be their main Optimus Prime? You've also got to think, is this going to be the only Optimus Prime we're going to get in Legacy as well? Probably not. Now Masterpiece is yet another example of this. Takara are not exactly innocent on this one either because you look at their Seekers, you look at their Optimus Prime molds, they have the version 2s and version 3s. So naturally MP10 was Takara's Really their staple, their masterpiece transformer, certainly their version of Optimus Prime they were most proud of and everyone was very happy with that figure until MP44 came out, looked very tune accurate and not everybody but a lot of people sold off MP10. So now you're looking at, well, if they're going to re-release their figures, do you just sell and recycle your old ones? You look into the fan toys market as well, they're doing version 2s as well, not so much with their sound wave, their acoustic wave, you look at their Preceptor, their Tesla, they've done a version 1 of that which you can now find very cheap on a secondary market because their upcoming 2.0 Tesla is coming out looking very tune accurate and what people are happy to recycle their collection for to get a more up-to-date version of the character. But not forgetting Legends of course, now Magic Square and New Age are recycling their collections very frequently, particularly with Magic Square, they've just done a Magic Square 2.0 version of their Optimus Prime. Now whilst it's absolutely fine, it wasn't that long ago that they released their first offering of Optimus Prime, so we're seeing a bit of rapid response here from the Legends team, and what I'm thinking is, why is it happening so quickly, but also why do we do it? Is it a case of we want to have the most up-to-date engineering possible? Particularly when you look at the chug line, some of the transformation, the figures in general have been wonderful. So it is worth upgrading, you get very good toys for it, but are you happy with the figures you've got? One example that comes to mind for me in the Masterpiece market was the Mate Toys Downbeat, their version of Jazz. It's really the only Masterpiece Jazz we had for a very long time. Now, very recently, Fans Toys have released versions of their Giant that will be shipping soon, and this is going to be their take on a very G1 looking Jazz. And a lot of people are going to be doing the same. Are they going to be selling their Downbeat to jump straight onto the Giant, the Fans Toys version, to take its place because they want that more up-to-date figure and tune accurate version. Now for my personal preference with Jazz, I'm very happy with my Mate Toys version. I like the look of what fans toys are going to release, but I'm quite happy with the Mate Toys version that I've got. I put a lot of money into it, I put some stickers on it. It looks the perfect Jazz for me at this point in time. But when you look at the Chug line, 
Are there figures that you want to replace? Well, time passes and things can look old very quickly, that is true, but we do invest a lot of money into these collections and anyone who is a completionist, it is a little bit damning, isn't it, that you get these collections looking all right and you've got one or two figures maybe to go to finish off a set and then Hasbro and Takara, they'll start to re-release a whole wave again and you're effectively starting from scratch if you want that pinnacle version. It depends how you want to dress up your collection, of course. It is worth pointing out, of course, that this is nothing new. The Generations line has been around for a little while, so updating your collection is quite common, but we are seeing it, at least in my mind, a lot more frequently now between waves and trilogies. They're coming through thick and fast. You can probably burn through a series within a trilogy in probably 9, 10, maybe 12 months before you're on to the next one. Earthrise wasn't around for long enough before Kingdom came along. As soon as Kingdom finished, on came Legacy. It won't be that long until the next series comes after that. But when you think of it this way, there are some figures that come out and there is this mad rush for it. So the one figure that comes to my mind is the Commander class Skylinks. Love that figure, I've got that figure, it is really really good. But you could pay quite a bit when that first came out and if you're willing to hang on for a little bit longer now as people are recycling their collections, you can now pick that up for quite a cheap price. And of course this is really aimed at the completionists, the ones who want to have everyone from Series 1, everyone from Series 3, whatever your take on it is. But if you're someone who just wants every version of Optimus Prime and every version of the Starscream, you're obviously going to buy the most up-to-date version to add to your collection. But it's nothing new, this has happened, but it is happening more frequently, more rapidly. And this is something that, with the offerings that come out, there is reason to upgrade your collection. But it is a shame when you just get to the end of finishing your collection and a whole new wave appears. But anyway, what do you guys think? Is there any figures out there that you felt that you were happy to leave off and stay with your previous incarnations? A lot of people have said the Titans Return Blur and Reveal the Shield Jazz have been two of the best figures released and they're not prepared to upgrade to any newer figures. But are there ones out there that you couldn't resist, that you felt the one was good before but this makes it look so much better? I've got to get that up-to-date version. Leave a comment below, I'd love to hear what you think. But thanks for watching and as always, I will see you on the next one. Mm -hmm.